Today I'm going to show you why you don't need CO2 in the Planet Aquarium. Stay tuned for Science Alliance. Alright, welcome to Science Alliance. Today's topic of discussion is CO2 in the Planet Tank. And since this is the first video of the series, uh, let me just take a minute here and uh, go through how this is going to work. So first, I'm going to be uploading a video supporting one side of an issue. In this case, uh, I'm going to be supporting non-CO2 planet tanks and low-tech setups, while my friend NickMock007 will be uploading a video supporting the opposite side of that same issue. In this case, he's going to be supporting uh, pressurized CO2 and some of the benefits of using that. So uh, to start off, I'll give you a little history of this tank. I actually set it up originally as a low-tech tank with you know low lights, um, not much fertilizer. In fact, no fertilizer. Um, it, it is a dirted tank, so the dirt kind of provided uh, the CO2 as it was breaking down in those first eight months or so, as well as all the nutrients, so that was really nice. And some of the reasons I went with this low-tech uh, setup originally was mainly because of the cost. Um, the last thing I wanted to do was, you know, throw another hundred dollars into this uh, by purchasing a pressurized CO2 system. So I went with the uh, the lower tech setup. Another reason why is uh, just the time involved. You know, I wasn't really sure if I'd have the time to be, uh, you know, trimming plants on a weekly basis and uh, you know doing a lot of fertilization stuff like that. So that's why I recommend, you know, these non-CO2 tanks for uh, beginners or people just who just don't have a lot of time to deal with their tank. Um, I've seen some beginners who have struggled with the, the CO2 right out of the gate, um, just trying to balance everything. Um, but I've also seen people who've had a lot of success with it. So it really depends on how much research you do, um, if you have the correct lighting, and if you have good balance in your tank overall. And another point I want to make on the lighting aspect is uh, in a non-CO2 tank, you do not need a lot of lighting at all. Um, if you have any questions about lighting, you can ask that in the comments below. But I like to use PAR, P-A-R, which is an acronym to describe uh, you know, strength of light. Uh, you can look up some PAR versus uh, distance charts online for various fixtures. Um, I know Phoenix uh, provides a lot of nice graphs and they show you the par at certain heights above your tank and that will really help you figure out uh, what the correct lighting will be uh, based on if you have CO2 or not. Uh, if you have too much light in a non-CO2 tank that CO2 is going to become the limiting factor and then you're going to get a bunch of algae and uh, other problems that come along with that imbalance with nutrients and light and CO2 which are the three things that you need to grow plants. Uh, but anyway just be careful when you're choosing a light uh, for your non-CO2 tank as I've seen many people uh, make the mistake of going with a really bright light and that's just going to want or make the plants want to grow faster uh, but they're not going to be able to grow faster because there's no CO2 so the algae is just going to use up uh, those that excess light. Also in a non-CO2 tank uh, most of the time you're dealing with really hardy plants um, as you can see in this tank all these plants in here could grow without the CO2. Uh, they do grow a lot faster with the CO2, but um, if you wanted to look at one of my other videos, the 200 day timeline of this tank, it shows all the plants in here uh, growing from day one uh, with the dirt without any CO2, and you can see I was getting some pretty nice growth uh, without adding anything for the most part. Uh, another thing to consider is the fact that you can still dose something like Seachem Excel or another liquid carbon source into your tank um, which will help provide that element of carbon to your plants. I think of Excel as sort of a you know midpoint between uh, non-CO2 and pressurized CO2 so it, it's it's going to provide a good amount of carbon for the plants but it's not going to uh, give you the same growth or uh, you know lushness in the plants as pressurized CO2 will. Uh, it's also good for uh, killing algae. That's what I use it for in this tank. I dose it on a daily basis uh, 
for the blackbird algae, and it seems to help quite a bit. Uh, but that's the Seacom XL is really only good for smaller tanks. In a large tank, uh, it's going to be more economical to go with the pressurized CO2 setup. So to sum all of that up, uh, low-tech tanks are going to be great for beginners or anybody who just doesn't have the time uh, to perform the maintenance involved with a high-tech tank. Uh, they're also really economical, uh, less time-consuming, and you can still create a great-looking aquascape uh, without the use of CO2. So now if you want to go check out uh, Nick Mock 007's video, uh, who's going to be supporting the pressurized CO2 aspect, I'm going to provide a link to that video at the end of this video. Uh, also remember to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, uh, you can send an email to us. We have a Science Alliance email. Uh, that will be in the description as well. And we also have a poll uh, about CO2, which we'd like you to take. That link is also in the description. Um, as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Science Alliance.